So, you want to be a YouTuber. You want to do video essays. But what is it like trying to integrate video clips into your work on this platform? Well, I'm going to crash course it for you. No particular reason why I thought I wanted to do this. I'm just like, yeah, let's get that on the record. It's something I have to talk about intermittently in videos and it comes up in live streams or whatnot. But let me tell you the basics of what I know from my experiences working on this platform. Also, as I attempt to try and integrate video more into my works going forward. So, <laughs> uh, I know what a headache this can be. So, this is not by any means going to be uh, all-encompassing or comprehensive. So, this is just the fast and dirty things that I have learned. First up, fair use, even if you are working under a clear definition of fair use, will not shield you from copyright dickery from copyright holders. Accept that it will happen, no matter what. If you use clips and if you use audio especially, it will happen. Just accept that going in. You're going to have to deal with that. Another thing that needs to be clear is fair use needs to be in some way transformative. You cannot simply present the clip without commentary, alteration, or critique. And that is the main things that, and at least on this platform, fair use falls under. It is What you are doing is somehow transformative with things like remixes where people take clips and like build new scenes out of them and things like that. That's arguably transformative. Or if you're doing commentary or critique. Now, you get dicey if your commentary is just, I'm just going to play this episode of the TV show and talk over it that you can argue it, but you're on shakier ground. But that's why a lot of video essays cut it up and add things from other things, you know, things from that same director to add context and flavor and nuance and, you know, reform it into your own thing. So that's your first thing. Next up, understand there is no magic number. There is no magic technique that will suddenly make it okay. I think a lot of these things have been dispelled and I don't hear them too much anymore, but I remember back in the day lots of people thought, oh well, anything under 12 seconds you can use and that's totally fine. Not true. Not to say you can't use it, but that does not clear you of trouble. Or people will say, oh, you know, just flip it. Just mirror the video clip and that's fine. Well, not really. What those things will do, those sorts of tricks, or, you know, using shorter clips, flipping it, uh, making it, you know, small in your window, not taking up the whole thing, things like that, what that'll do is make it less likely that it'll be picked up by bots. Because you need to realize pretty much every copyright claim that happens on any video on this platform is not being done by a human being, it's being done by a bot. They have bots that scour for copyrighted things and then lay a claim on it when they find it. So doing those kinds of alterations will make it less likely that the bots will find you, but if they do, or if an actual live human being who has an interest in the copyright gets their eyes on it, those sort of things aren't gonna protect you. They're not a defense uh, in terms of fair use or being transformative or anything like that. Now, once your video is claimed, you're going to have to go through the appeals process and make your case as to why what you've done is fair use. So here's, here's the really, there's a couple of really annoying things about the claims process. It's gotten better. It used to be that once a copyright holder claimed your video, they started getting the revenue immediately. Once you appeal it, nobody's getting the money generated by revenue and any any money generated that goes in basically to a side pot that does not get distributed to either you or the copyright holder until the dispute has been sorted. So at the very least, copyright holders can't steal from you uh, anymore. Uh, at least not as long as you are you know keeping up and you appeal quickly once the claim hits. Which is one of the reasons why YouTube at this point actually actively encourages that if you have anything that might get copyright claimed to initially upload your video as unlisted or private so that the bots will have their shot at it and you can then appeal on it before it's live and before it's actually even generating any revenue. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So once it has been claimed, you can appeal. You make your case as to why you think it's fair use, your explanation for the clips used, etc., etc., and then you submit that. Now, depending on who the uh, copyright holder is, come back to that, um, 
this one of two things will happen. Either they will respond relatively quickly, a few days to a week, most of the time. Now, a pretty good chunk of the time, once they have seen your explanation, it will then be released. Or they will reject your appeal. Because what the appeal, the appeal is not to a third party, the appeal is to the copyright holder. And when you appeal to them, they will look at your appeal and they'll either go, oh, oh yeah, well that's fine, and they'll drop their claim on it, or they'll say, no, this is still ours, we, we want the revenue from this. And if they do that, you can try, you can appeal again, but then you're playing a much higher stakes game. Because at that point, if the copyright holder rejects your appeal again, you now have become uh, liable and they could theoretically, it could theoretically become a court issue. Now, let's be clear, that's almost never happened. It's actually kind of in nobody's interest for these things to go to court because for the YouTubers, you can't really afford it, which is why most of us will not escalate it to that point. And even for the copyright holders, it's not in their interest either because they've got a lot more to lose because if they go to court and they lose, that's setting a precedent that's going to work against them in all future cases. So, no, it's in nobody's interest to actually hold that hard. So, most of the time, the copyright holders will not double down on their claim unless they are really confident that that you did not do anything transformative and it's not fair use. Or unless they're really, 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 really massive jerks. Which brings us to one of the things that we set aside, which was the copyright holders. Some are worse than others. Some are terrible. Some are completely laid back. So, this is based off strictly my experience, and again, not comprehensive. Disney, very laid back, doesn't really care. Warner Brothers, really laid back, doesn't care. So that means all Disney-related stuff, Marvel, Star Wars, DC, th all that stuff, y you basically have to upload a, a large chunk of it with absolutely no alterations or comment or critique whatsoever to tick them off. For the most part, like, they don't care. These are smart organizations that realize that people talking about using clips from their movies and shows keeps people talking about it, it keeps it more in the zeitgeist, and it's basically free marketing, even if it's something critical of them. Video games, I have a lot less experience in. I haven't really used clips on video games at all, so I can't talk to video game copyright holders. So, as far as movies and TV, Disney, cool. Warner Brothers, cool. Fox, I had this tested recently. I would have thought because Disney bought them that they would have adopted Disney's more relaxed attitude. They haven't. They're pretty quick to lay claims. Now, I have, when I've appealed claims from Fox, gotten them released, but they're one of the ones, because one of the things that can happen with the claims is that they will, if, if you appeal, they have they don't have to respond for 28 days. And some of them will just let the clock run out. If they're more courteous, they'll look at your appeal and go, oh, we're sorry, release it to you and everything's fine. If they're kind of jerks, but not jerky enough to double down uh, and reject your appeal, they will let the clock run out, which means holding up your video for four weeks. That's what Fox has done to me. That was why my uh, theme, uh, trans themes and famous movies back on the uh, Council of Geeks channel, that went out almost a month later than I wanted it to because of Fox. Um, beyond that, Universal, I haven't had a ton of uh, interaction with uh, either way. Uh, Paramount are jerks. Paramount are massive jerks. Paramount is the only um, company that I have come across that will claim you for a still image. Not even video, a photo, a publicity shot, a poster. They will claim it. Paramount is awful. And it's actually got to the point where whenever I review something on Council of Geeks that is a Paramount thing, no images. <laughs> and I'll usually point that out that that's the reason why, because they're jerks. They're terrible. Arguably just as bad, actually possibly worse, but in a slightly different way, is the BBC. Which I'm tangled with because I talk about Doctor Who a lot. Now, 
My experience with the BBC has been incredibly mixed. It's gone all over the dang place. I've had times where they've issued claims, I've done an appeal, and they released it, it was fine. I've had other times, they, BBC, is one of the only times that I had them, not only did they claim a video, they rejected my appeal, and they are still taking the revenue on that video because I cannot risk the idea that they will possibly take me to court. So, in my video on Council of Geeks, on barrier gaze tropes, which used 10 seconds, maybe, of footage, from Doctor Who, in a nearly 20 minute video, they get the revenue from that entire video. Always and forever. So BBC can bite me. They, I, so for that alone, I am always going to be ticked off at the BBC, even though they don't do that consistently. They haven't always done that to me, but they have. And I'm not going to forget it. I can hold a grudge. The other thing to keep aware of, the thing that is actually going to get you in more trouble than video clips, audio clips. And I don't mean dialogue, I mean music. Because, you may not realize this, the rights holder for soundtracks for movies and TV are usually not different companies, but different divisions. It's not so... When you use, say, a clip of music from Star Wars, it's not the Lucasfilm video copyright division you're dealing with. It's the music copyright. And all music copyright holders are aggressive as hell. Any amount of it, they will claim it immediately. They do not let it go. And this is why things like Incompetech, Kevin MacLeod, is wonderful because it's a ton of royalty-free music. And YouTube has its own royalty-free resources that it's now offering a lot of its creators. Make use of that. Do not bother with copyrighted music. Ever. Video, you can, you know, depending on who has the copyright, you can finagle. Audio, just don't. Music, don't even try. It is... It's a nightmare. YouTubers who review music, I don't even know how any of them make a living. I really don't. So there's my random rambling crash course on copyright on YouTube. It's a mess around here. But maybe now you know a little more. Or maybe I just got some nonsense off my chest because at the time of recording I just finited, fin finited? finished my uh, first attempt to edit more video into a Doctor Who uh, review and going to be attempting to upload that later today and so maybe I'm nervous and this is on my mind. Who knows? <laughs> In any case, was that helpful for you at all? Do you care? Whatever. Whatever your thoughts are, drop them down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Usual stuff. Like, subscribe. I got a Patreon. I got other channels. I have social medias, links, and merch, and stuff. Don't sweat it, though. No big deal. You know, we're laid back here. Come on back next time you need a break.